Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here with a little bit of a different setup than usual, and that's because of the thing behind me, the Blackmagic eGPU Pro. So potentially you could buy this external GPU, plug it into something like the Mac Mini behind me, and you could be getting graphics performance that is near the current level of the iMac Pro. So for this video, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to see how this Blackmagic eGPU Pro performs when doing certain tasks. So let's start with the unboxing of this thing first. As soon as you open up the box, you immediately greet it with the Blackmagic eGPU Pro. And as you take it out of the box, you'll notice that it has a pretty interesting design. If you have any experience with other eGPUs on the market, you know that they're usually pretty big and bulky and they're usually not shaped in a vertical orientation they're usually shaped in a more horizontal orientation so the GPU is kind of laying like this way with the Blackmagic eGPU Pro you're getting a nice vertical orientation so it has a nice space gray finish that should pair nicely with the Mac mini or the space gray finishes of the MacBook Pro or MacBook Air another cool thing about the Blackmagic eGPU Pro is that it also kind of functions as a dock so aside from the two Thunderbolt 3 cables on the back of the device you'll also find that you have four USB ports, an HDMI port, and a display port. So you can connect your USB accessories to this eGPU Pro, and it'll also hook up to a wide range of monitors. What's cool about the Thunderbolt 3 cable is that if you have a MacBook Pro, if you plug it into the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, it will charge it at the full 85 watts. So if you have a 15 inch MacBook Pro, you can just hook this up with a single cable, it'll start charging, and you'll also get that nice performance from having an external graphics card. Another important thing to note is that it has two Thunderbolt 3 connections. So if you are an owner of the LG Ultrafine 5K monitor, like I am, it's the monitor I have behind me, that is one of the only ways to hook up an external graphics card to it is by going with the Blackmagic eGPU series. So if you are an owner of this monitor and you're interested in eGPUs, you are kind of limited in your selection, but thankfully you do have at least two options with the regular Blackmagic eGPU and of course this new Blackmagic eGPU Pro. It really is a nice looking eGPU, especially compared to some of the competitors that can get really big and bulky and they just don't really look too nice. Whereas having this on my desk, I actually like the way it looks. Okay, we can talk about how nice this thing looks or how awkward it looks or what it can connect to, but I think what you guys really care about is how does this thing perform and is it worth that hefty price tag? So to benchmark this eGPU, I'm going to be using the Mac mini behind me. It is a six core i5 processor and it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card inside of it. In fact, if you look at my Mac mini review, you'll know that I said that one of my biggest complaints was that the graphics card in the Mac mini was really, really weak. So I thought it was the perfect computer to pair up with this Blackmagic eGPU so we could kind of see how much having a dedicated eGPU would help with the performance of the Mac mini for the more graphic oriented tasks. So we're gonna run a couple benchmarks and we're also gonna play a couple games and we're gonna see just how much of an improvement the Blackmagic eGPU Pro is. So the first thing we're gonna load up is the Heaven benchmark on the Mac mini without the eGPU. Now for both of these benchmarking tests, we're gonna run it at 1080p on ultra settings on the Heaven benchmark. And as we run the Heaven benchmark on the Mac mini, it's not looking good at all. The Mac mini can not even keep up with any of this. It's running at three to maybe max six frames per second. It's getting frame drops everywhere. It looks like a stop motion picture show. It's really, really bad. The performance without this eGPU is just downright horrible. It's barely even running on the Mac mini. Now, as we run the Heaven benchmark with the same exact settings on the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, we're getting around 50.6 frames per second on average. 92.4 on the max frames per second and a 10 minimum frames per second which really didn't happen all too often only during the most difficult tasks of the heaven benchmark running the heaven benchmark connected to that eGPU is a night and day difference it makes the mac mini going from unusable to getting some actually pretty decent results maybe not the best results in the world but hey if you have a mac mini and you're really disappointed with the graphics performance connecting this eGPU pro to it will boost it significantly. So for the next benchmark, I wanted to load up Shadow of Mordor. This also has an inbuilt benchmarking tool and we're gonna run it on Ultra as well to kind of stress test both the Mac Mini and the Blackmagic eGPU Pro. So as we run the benchmark of Shadow of Mordor on the Mac Mini on Ultra settings, you can see that it's not 
pretty at all. We're getting around five frames per second. It looks like an unplayable mess. It basically just looks like a slideshow. As we end the benchmark, we can see we're getting an average frames per second of 5.16, a max frames per second of 7.55, and a minimum FPS of 3.54. That's pretty bad. You really can't play Shadow Mordor on any of the high settings with the Mac Mini. It's, it's really bad. Let's go ahead and switch it over to the Black Magic eGPU Pro. Now running that same benchmark on the Blackmagic eGPU, we can see that we're getting a much better frame rate with around 33 frames per second on average, 66.34 max frames per second, and again, a 10 minimum frames per second, very similar to the Heaven benchmark where maybe at some of the more challenging tasks, like a really big explosion with a lot of enemies on screen, it might have snagged there, but overall some really good performance coming out of the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, definitely a lot better than the internal graphics inside of the Mac Mini. Even if we load up Shadow of Mordor and play around with a bunch of enemies on screen, you can see that the gameplay is overall smooth. You can get 60 frames per second if you're willing to sacrifice some of the graphics quality. You can't really do it on Ultra. If you do want higher frame rate or you want higher resolution or you want better graphics, those are kind of up to you. You're not gonna be able to run it on Ultra 60 frames per second with the highest resolution. But again, you're taking something that was basically unplayable and you're getting some decent performance coming out of an external graphics card, which is kind of amazing. Now let's load up one of my favorite games, StarCraft 2, and I've reviewed this on the channel before with the Mac Mini. I said you could play StarCraft 2 on lower settings, and I wanted to test the 5K resolution on a Mac Mini to kind of stress test it, and the performance on that was not pretty. So although StarCraft 2 is playable on low settings on a Mac Mini, by putting it at 5K and stress testing it, we were getting around 11 frames per second. So pumping that resolution up on the Mac Mini, isn't gonna work for you. You can play the game on low settings, like I said, but again, we are kind of trying to stress test both of these machines. Now, when we use the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, we can play StarCraft II at 5K on low settings, no problem. In fact, we can even bump it up to around high settings to medium settings, and we're getting around 60 frames per second on medium and 45 to 60 frames per second on high. I switched StarCraft 2 to ultra mode, and on 5K I could not get 60 frames per second, but I did switch it to 1080 on ultra, and on 1080 on ultra I was getting around 40 to 60 frames per second when a lot of enemies were on screen, it would dip into 40 frames per second. These are definitely the highest settings that I've personally played. StarCraft 2 using a Mac before, so I definitely gotta give the Blackmagic eGPU credit here. Okay, let's take a break from the gaming tests and run a Geekbench score to see the metal score of the Mac Mini. And the metal score on the Mac Mini came in at 21,980. Now, while I ran this same metal benchmark on the eGPU Pro, you can really see the performance difference here. So for the Geekbench Metal score on the Blackmagic eGPU, we got a score of 163,188, and that benchmark is just night and day difference. The Blackmagic eGPU is destroying the inbuilt graphics card on the Mac Mini. Okay, to end this video, I thought we would do one more final test with the Mac Mini and the Blackmagic eGPU Pro. So one of the things I do the most on my computer is video editing, so I wanted to do a benchmarking test on Final Cut Pro 10. Now this is a very popular benchmarking tool to test the graphics performance of your Mac. It's called the Bruce X Benchmark, and this is a 5K graphics export test, and you can kind of time it. If you have a Mac yourself and you want to see how fast your export times are, you you can download this, run it, make sure you turn off background rendering as well so you get a more accurate reading. Now while running the Final Cut Pro 10 Bruce X test with no eGPU connected, we can see that the Mac Mini is going to take a little while to finish this. It's going to finish around one minute and 20 seconds. Now let's connect the Blackmagic eGPU Pro. And as we switch over to the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, you can see that this thing is exporting really, really fast compared to the inbuilt graphics card on the Mac Mini. In fact, it finishes in just 18 seconds compared to the one minute and 20 seconds that it took the Mac Mini without the eGPU. Not only did it export faster, but just through scrubbing through the timeline and playing around with it, you can also notice that you have higher quality previews inside of Final Cut Pro 10, so you don't have to enable those 
lower quality previews like you would have to if you're just using the Mac mini without the eGPU. And if you're dealing with a lot of graphics heavy content inside of Final Cut Pro 10, you will see a nice difference with the Blackmagic eGPU Pro. Okay, so this is the end of the video where I kinda have to make a judgment on this device. And I gotta be honest with you, this is something that's really, really hard to review. So if you look online, you'll probably notice that the Radeon Vega 56 retails for around $450 to $500. And maybe say you get a cheap external graphics processing unit like the Razer Core X you'll notice that's around $300. So let's say you have a $500 Vega 56 and a $300 eGPU, you're spending around $800 to get that all hooked up for you. Where with the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, you're spending an extra $400 for a unit that isn't even upgradable. You can't even swap out the cards inside of this if you wanted to upgrade at a later time. It's stuck with the Vega 56 that's currently inside of it. Okay, so a $400 difference. Where maybe is the Blackmagic eGPU Pro? What advantages does it have that maybe the Razer Core X or another cheaper external graphics card wouldn't have compared to it? Well, there's actually a couple. So number one, this thing is really, really quiet. During all of the exporting, during my gaming, I barely heard the fans on this thing spin up and it was really quiet. There's also no setup involved, so the Vega 56 is pre-installed inside of it, even though installing a eGPU isn't the hardest thing in the world, it will save you a few extra steps if you're just buying this unit. And of course, the biggest advantage is if you're like me and you have an LG Ultrafine 5K as your secondary monitor, that is going to be one of the only options you have available for you to use unless you're going with the cheaper Blackmagic eGPU, which retails for $699. Again, that has a weaker Radeon Pro 580 compared to the Vega 56 found in the eGPU Pro. I really hate when I have to review a product and I really just can't come up with a final verdict for everyone. It is a really mixed bag with this Blackmagic eGPU Pro. I'm really not sure if it's worth that extra money for all the extra you know, quietness, for the design, for the low profile. I like it, but again, it's a really expensive unit, especially considering that when you buy like a Mac mini, you're spending less money than this entire eGPU setup. And you also have to consider that there's other newer GPUs coming out on the market today. So even though this was just released, it's kind of already outdated with the Vega 56 inside of it. Anyway, I really hope this video helped you make a decision either way, either if you're going to buy the Blackmagic eGPU or if you're not going to buy it. But I would love to hear from you in the comments below. So let me know if the video helped you out. Let me know if you plan on buying this, if you don't plan on buying this, if you plan on using any external GPU connected to your Mac. Also, if you guys like the video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you subscribe. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.